Welcome back everybody to a JOSB SN presentation of your Sandy Nanners. Welcome back to the Jacko the Soccer Bro Sports Network here today. The Sandy Nanners are facing off against here for the beer. An absolute unit of a squad. Let's see how the Sandy Nanners can take this one as Ella fumbles that first point away for your Sandy Nanners. Let's meet the squad real quick while we can. In the back right there, we have, we're on a different court this time, is Jack. In the middle, the back middle is Ella. Back left, Gavin. Front left, Colin. Front middle, Jada. Front right is Max with the pink headband there. As this time it gets returned, it gets sent over. Ella once again sets it up for Jada. Jada goes to Max. Max spikes it down and it's going to be out of bounds here. A good play to start the game there from the Sandy Nanners. Max just could not find the inbounds part of the sand. And that's going to be a 2-0 lead right away for here for the beer. And in case you haven't noticed, they are playing a man short. They are playing with five out on the court today. Let's see how that affects them in this one. As the third serve is about to come underway here. A little bit of a delay. There we go, this one's up. This one's gonna go over to Ella. Ella sends it straight back to Jada. Jada is caught by the net on that one. Just simply too small to get to that ball before it can hit the net. 3-0. The Sandy Nanders have tended to struggle early on. They concede quick leads as Gavin sends that one straight over. They are playing with a different ball today. So that one goes over to Jack to Gavin who sends this high and over. Like I said, they are playing with a different ball than their usual, which could certainly affect their performance. Gavin does well to return that one up for Colin, who puts it short on the other side. This was a good spike from the back row, and it's going to fly out of bounds, much similar to Max's spike attempt from earlier on in this one. And the Sandy Nanners, then and there, get their first point in this one to put them on the board and give them their first batch of serves of the game for Jacko here. It's a short floater up into the middle. This one's going to get sent over with one hand. Jada to Max. Max is not able to get a spike on that one, but he's going to find an open patch of sand. Like I said, here for the beer are playing a man down, and that middle spot was left wide open for Max to place that ball with precision to put the game back within one in the early doors of this one. And the serve from Jack is going to be short and into the net. Make that a two-point game here. This ball certainly does not fly as well as the one that the Nanas are used to here, which certainly will affect them later on. But, you know, you got to be able to play in all conditions. You got to be able to play in every single court with every single ball you can. And, you, you know, you got to adapt. Improvise, adapt, overcome. You know how the saying goes. Let's see how the Sandy Nanners can do that here. That was a good, hard serve. Gavin's able to return that one perfectly for Ella to get to. To Colin, who doesn't spike it down with his usual gusto. So that one's going to get sent up and into the net on that spike attempt there. It was a tough one for Colin to deal with in the first place. But the point, regardless, will fall for the Sandy Nanners here. Max now. Switching it up with his underhand serve technique. He's changed it as of late to avoid the overhands just because it worked for him to be extremely consistent. As you can see there, they struggle to return. 4-4. Tie game early on. Yeah, Max is switching it up for a more underhand approach. He's chosen to take the consistency route over power in this one as he sends that thing straight back over to Colin who spikes it down. That's what we expect to see out of him in that front middle spot to give the Sandy Nanners their first lead of the game, 5-4 in this one. For what I believe is the second week in, actually, I, I lied, this is, this might just be the first week in a while that the Sandy Nanners are playing with their full starting rotation here as the game gets tied up at five apiece. Finally getting regular appearances here in this one from both Ella and Colin in the middle there. Colin with one L, there are two Collins on the Sandy Nanners squad. One with one L, this one here, and one with two L's, the ones that we've seen in prior weeks. As Jada gets her first chance to serve with the new ball in this one. Jada has been a very solid server for the Sandy Nanners throughout this season. That consistent, short, underhand approach. It goes nice and high, but it falls on the, the, the shallow side of the net, with you will. And that one got teed up for Gavin to spike it down. 7-5. This could be the point here where the Sandy Nanas start to pull away, as they routinely have shown to do in these games. They get off to some rough starts, but then once the middle section of the game, the middle phase, gets underway, they pull away, as that serve from Jada is going to fly just a bit out of bounds there. 7-6. A rare miss on the serves there from her. We can take this brief pause in the action to ask you guys to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. We have just recently hit 500 subs, which is fantastic. Uh, it's time to get to 1,000 now. Let's go. This serve is going to come. Jack is going to decommit out of that one. It makes it tough for Max. 
Ella and Gavin managed to work it out. This was going to get sent to Jack, who dives for it and is not able to get a good enough connection on the ball to send it back towards his teammates there. Point four here for the beer. It's her second serve is under here. An overhand approach here. Shallow Collin does well to react to that one to send it up for Gavin, who spikes it down. That one's going to fly. Kept alive here. She can send it over and does. Far for Jada. Jada does well to get that one. Collin tips it over. A little bit of a melee at the net there for here for the beer, and that point will fall for the Sandy Nanners, giving Colin his first batch of serves in this one. Colin is the only person on the Sandy Nanner roster of, I believe it is nine players at this point, to have a perfect serve rate still in this one, as that one floats right nice up and into the middle there. Jaded as well to get down to that ball, but it's not going to be good enough for Gavin to get the second hit on it, and the game is tied up once again at 8 a piece here. That point I said about the Sandy Nanders pulling away is not true there. That's a great serve, splitting the difference there between Jada and Ella off of the net. Great serve to get bring the lead back to here for the beer. The second serve is underway. This one goes far, and Jada using her height disadvantage, if you will, to leave that one and give the point back to the Sandy Nanners. Gavin has also been a very consistent and underappreciated server for the squad here. He sends a, a very similar overhand approach to a lot of the players we've seen in this one. It goes high and, what am I saying? It goes shallow. As Max spikes that one down. There we go. He got teed up perfectly by the opposing team there on that one. 10-9 being the score. What a hit from Max. That kind of power you don't see from him too often, but when he pulls it out, it is impressive. Nonetheless, that's what's going to get sent over there. Colin gets to it. Ella calls Jack off. And Max sends that one down hard. And Max blocks it again, but it's going to get blocked onto his own side of the net there. 10-10 tie game as Max pulls a very similar block as what we saw from Gavin in, I believe this was last week. I'm not sure. We had that two-hand block into the net. I haven't forgotten about it. I know you're watching this. I ain't forget about that as Max and Jada both track towards the ball and then decommit out at the same time. The lead back is with, lead is back with here for the beer. Uh, talking is a struggle again. Gavin's going to send this one up for Colin. Colin, who back sets it up for Max. Max sends it over the net. As that one gets spiked down by Jack on her head there. Despite the fact that there was three men who hit that ball, it's going to get played. It is a, it's a very relaxed. It's a relaxed rule in this league. Sometimes it's called, sometimes it's not called. It's just at the discretion of the teams playing today. Tie game here at 11 of bases. Ella gets this set of serves here. She's going to get sent just up over the block there from Jack. Gavin goes to Max, and Max goes over the net well recovered there well worked routine this was going to get sent over for Ella Ella hits the dig lands that thing over to the other side sent back over once again Gavin is able to get to it Jada calls Max away from the ball and Max hits a little backwards bump on that one Max blocks this one here it goes up Max spikes it down point for the Nanners that's the second time Max has had a big kill up at the net for the Sandy Nanners off of his own block on that one great play from him to get up and down so quickly to get to that ball twice in the span of Less than five seconds here. Great serve from Ella there. Finds a nice patch of sand, but it is well recovered. Max sends it over here. Max blocks it down again. He killed that one. There was no block intention there. He was swinging away to give the point to the Sandy Nanners here. 13-11. Max in the middle has been killing it so far in this one early on. And Ella has another serve here. This one also goes shallow. There's been a lot of shallow serves here from your Nanners. Gavin's going to send this thing far. Once again, shallow side. Just up over the block of Max in that return. And he does well to get a hand of that one after Jada's set attempt goes a little bit wayward, but it is going to fall out of bounds 13 to 10. As there is a hard serve for here for the beer. Back up to the net. Let's see how the Nanners can respond to this one. This one's going to fly to Gavin, who fumbles it. And it's going to go out of bounds to tie the game up once again at 13 apiece. We are in a close one here as we are just closing out the middle phase of this game. Second serve underway for him. Gavin this time as well to get there. Jack tips this thing up and over. This is going to get sent far over. Max is there. As he, I guess that counts as a block. He just got a nice two hands up on that one at the net. Max has at least three blocks and two kills minimum already in this one. And the game is still seven points away from being claimed as a victory for either squad here in this one. He is performing out of his mind so far. This is going to get sent for Max to Colin, who I can't believe he didn't mess up his shoulder there, stretching to get that one, and he gets the kill. 15-13 to 13 here. Let's see how Jack can continue these serves here. 
for the Sandy Nanners. Sticking with that overhand approach. This was going to get returned, but not in a spot for any of her teammates to get to there from the Lady and I. Is that orange? Is that orange? I'm not sure. I think that's orange. This serve from Jack is going to hit the net and fall. An ace from him in this one. 17 to 13 now. Now is when the Sandy Nanners are finally starting to pull away a little bit in this one. Four points is the deficit for here for the beer, and four points is the never mind. Three points is the deficit here, and four points is the gap to victory for the Sandy Nanners in this one. As both teams are in their second batch of serves here, this one's going to fly just a little bit out of bounds, and Max gets a nice chest touch on that one to make it 18 to 14. Once again, a four point game here. Let's see how Max can continue his impressive performance so far in this one, serving that one into the middle. This one's gonna get sent far side on the set and a little bit too far side for, would that be an olive colored shirt? Greenish, I, I don't know. Colors are hard too. This one's gonna get set over, Max is there for it. Max to Jada, Jada as well to get that one away from the net and Colin ends up slapping it over. Over the block of Gavin, but not over the block of Colin, who gets the kill on that one. 20 to 14 there. Good net play from the two bigs up at the net right now for your Sandy Nanners, who are one point away from victory in this one. It is a 21 point rally today. Jack, Jada, Colin. Oh, that one's going to get kept alive there. Jada gets to it once again, and Colin this time is going to land it to win the game for the Sandy Nanners. That's how you close out a victory from the big man in the middle there for the Sandy Nanners. 21-14 being the final score of game one. It was a close one up until about, just about the ending phase of the game managed to get underway and then the Sandy Nanners pulled away to make it a, not all that close. Final score. Let's see how they can do in game two now in this one. Off of a high momentum finish to game one. Jack serve once again here. This one's gonna float a little bit more as compared to the power, and it's gonna get not returned there. one nothing. Let's see if the St. Nanders can do some of their usual game two antics that they get up to. They've been killer in game twos, as this one's gonna float once again into the shallow middle area. Sent over, Max is not able to get the block on that one. Jack to Jada, Jada to Max, and Max spikes it down into his own net on that one. Oh, that was just about the textbook play that the Sandy Nanners try to go for, but Max is not able to finish the job on that one to give the point to here for the beer. Ella does well to set that one up for Jada. Jada goes to Max, but it's not very spikeable. Max plays that thing down into a great part of the part of the court to get to, and that's going to create his serve now in game two early on in this one. Good. Once again, from here up in the booth, I'd like to ask you guys to subscribe to the Jacko the Soccer Bro channel if you have not just yet. We have recently hit 500 subscribers and are now on the road, well on the road to 1,000s. So that was going to get double hit and fair caught by Max. Didn't know fair catching was a volleyball turn, but here we are. Is this one going to get sent up over there and finds a patch of sand just over Jack and just out of reach for Ella to get to. 3-2 as a... The here for the beer number one server now is up. What can he do with these? Shallow over the middle. Jack gets nice up on that one. And Colin and Ella have a little bit of a uh, struggle to get to that ball. And it is going to fall for a here for the beer point. Tie game early on in this one. Another serve. Jack sends this thing up straight for Max. And Max completely whiffs on that one. Two hands to the ball. But the ball didn't move like it was hit after that one. A 3 4 as here for the beer get their first lead of this one as that serve falls into the net to create a what am I saying here it's, it's gonna be Jada's serve in this one 4-4 four, four. let's see how she can do with her second batch of serve here swishing it up for an overhand approach and that might just not happen again on that one as that one flies a little bit wayward there to give the lead back to here for the beer I believe that might just be the first overhand serve attempt we've seen from Jada in this one could be the last it could not be the last it's all up to her Ella's going to send this thing to Colin. Colin tips it over and manages to sneak a point out of that one. He had to, re had to play a reaction move to get to that ball, and he does so, finding an open patch of sand for the Sandy Nanners as they are locked into an early tie game. Once again here, sim much similar to game one, really. Colin served now. A nice high floaty ball into the shallow middle. Jack's block is not able to get there, and Ella is not able to set it up for any of her teammates on that one. It's back to a one-point game for here for the beer. Alternating serves at this point. 
Let's see which team can go on a run first here, because volleyball really does tend to be a game of runs. You score three, four points in rows. No Sandy Nanner moved on that serve. An ace from, I don't even remember who that was over there. Great serve from them. Like I was saying, volleyball really is a game of runs here. You just got to get get into a groove with the serves, get into a groove with the returns, whatever it may be, and then just build a nice little gap between yourself and the opponent here. Colin does well to get to that one and sends it far on the opposite side, up over the block. Colin does great to return that one once again. Gavin is going to be the man to send this thing over there off of LS set. Jack is able to block that one down. It's kept alive, and then it falls there. Finally getting some net play out of him in this one. He's been a little quiet so far as it is back to a one-point lead for here for the beer, and Gavin is up to serve now. Floaty ball, shallow middle. There's a lot of that going around. That one's going to get sent out of bounds there. Whoa, pardon me. Out of bounds there on that one. Tie game. Sevens apiece now as Gavin could potentially look to set the Sandy Nanners off for a good run here in this one. As we are starting to enter the middle phase of this game, that one's well returned for Max, who spikes it down with pace. Clear the landing zone, because there is a man high flying to kill that ball. 8-7 as the first lead for the Sandy Nanners happens in quite some time, I do believe. I don't remember the last time they had a lead in this one, other than, obviously, at the end of game one here. 8-7 as Gavin still... Has his serve here. This, this one's gets sent off the net. It's kept alive there. Tipped up over the block attempts from both Jack and Max. Collins sets this thing up for Max. Max does not have a great kill attempt on it. Goes up for it once again. Sent into the back row there for Gavin. Gavin to Jack. Jack just sends that thing up high floaty. And Max cannot get the block in that one. Jada's attempt. Max does well to keep it alive there. And Collins just has to relax and send it over. Does well. Blocked by Jack. And that one's going to fall into the sand. 9-7. Great one-handed block there from him to give Gavin another chance to serve here. 9-7, the Sandy Nanners finally going on a little bit of a scoring run here with, I believe, that's four in a row from them. Another short serve from Gavin. Not sure how legal that return is as the net does all the blocking needed there. Jack didn't have to get a hand on that ball, and it's now a three-point game here. See how Gavin can keep this up. This is great from him so far. This one's going to get sent over with one hand. That is definitely illegal, but who are the Sandy Nanners to call that one? in a game that they certainly do look poised to win. 10-8 now as that point will fall for here for the beer, unfortunately. Hard serve there. Colin gets one hand on it from the back row, sends it over to Max. High flying. He's not able to get a good downward momentum kill on that ball. Max able to, is able to get to that one again. Jack was jumping around at the net trying to find any chance to block it, but it ends up just flying to Max who gets a one fist to the ball and sending it down. 11-8, still a three-point game here for the Nanners as Ella gets her, I believe this is her second batch of serves so far in this game. This one's going to fly opposite side here. Jack recovers that one. It's going to get sent into the net on the kill attempt there from the lady in that left side from here. Four points now is the difference in this one. It's, it's getting a little bit tough to see here for the beer coming back early on in this one. High serve from Jada is going to fall, and he gets there, but not in a good enough position to send this thing up over the net or to any teammates there. Great effort to find to scramble and get to that one. But five points here as the Sandy Nanners have a 13 to 8 lead is a little bit tough to overcome at this stage of the game here. Let's see if they can do it. This serve from Ella has hard underhand potential on that one. She can if she can work on that, that could be a very good serve for the Nanners. Max is gonna send this thing over. The kill attempt once again goes into the net for here for the beer. A big problem with their squad right now is that they simply just do not have the height that the Sandy Nanners have. Jack and Max are both six foot three apiece. Gavin is either six foot three or six foot four. I can't tell. And Colin is either six four or six five. So this squad is certainly one of the largest in the league in terms of their size, and that creates a huge advantage for them at the net. There, as you've seen so far in this one for sure, with the amount of blocks and kills going on, especially from Max and Colin. As I believe that this time they are going to call the three men hitting the ball there. Desperate for points here, here for the beer. We'll take whatever they can there, as it is still a five-point game in this one, 14 to nine. This one's gonna get set up for Colin. Colin to Jada, Jada to Max. Max does not get a kill on that ball there. This one's gonna get sent over. Max is not able to block that one. Jack has to get another backwards tip on it. He does, and Max's block attempt is, is there. It wasn't needed, but it certainly was there, and you can only assume, based on how he's performing today, he would have landed that one. It's six points. That's the difference here as Jack is up to serve. Once again here, this one's going to get sent to the man over there. Max gets another block on this ball, and it's going to fall. 
Max is performing the best we have ever seen from him up at the net today. It's seven points now in this one, 16 to nine. The game two, Sandy Nanners were here to play. Let's see how Jack can continue his serve so far. They've been decent when they don't hit the net because that one's gonna fly up and over. Jade is gonna get this one up for Max. Max tries to go far side for Colin who wasn't ready for it. It rides the net before falling down on the Sandy Nanner side of the sand here. 16 to 10 is the score in this one as the here for the beer ace server, their number one guy is up to hit this one. Hits this thing hard over at Jack. Jack does well to return this thing to Gavin. The underhand bumps that thing far and it's well recovered. Up over the block of Max. Jack sends this thing with a swinging two-handed bump, and that one's gonna fly into the net, kept alive, and it's gonna fall. 17 to 10 is the score in this one. Four points away from victory are the Sandy Nanners here, as Max will get another chance to see what he can do on his serves. Will he stick with his underhand approach? That's been working so well for him in the back half of the season so far. We're still in the first half, but he, he, he switched up his approach there as Jack manages to get to that ball to send it over. This one's going to get sent just out of bounds. It's going to hit the pole and fall. Eight points now in this one. Sandy Nanners really are pulling away here in the middle of the late phase of this game here, which is what they do. That is what they've they've shown to do that over and over again. Uh, Gavin is going to call off Colin, and it's going to work because he's going to get the kill there off of that errant return. And it's, it's not close anymore. This one is really starting to slip away from here for the beer. The Sandy Nanners are pulling away. This one's going to get sent over once again. That one also gets, gets questionable as to the, the legality of it, but it will fall as a point for here for the beer. They can take the odd point here and there, and this one certainly won't hurt the Nana's overall performance. At least they, they certainly hope that they won't fumble a 19-10 to 10 lead as Colin is going to do well to get that one. It's going to fall. Wow. I'm not sure if that was a spin he put on the ball or what, but he does well to save that point there off of Jack's errant return to make it 22-11. Game point here. Let's see what Jada can do on the serve here. She's back to the underhand. A nice short underhand serve here. And this one's gonna fall into the net. 21-11 being the final score of game two in this one. The Sandy Nanners have won the week already. All that they can look to do now in game three is secure the bonus point. <laughs> well performed there. Wait a second. Is that Jesse Pinkman? <laughs> All right, I gotta step away for a sec. Let me know if there's any shenanigans going on. Five minutes at this point. Oh yeah, that framing is perfect. Look at that. Hang on, just Jada hack. All right, we are back here for game three. I'm certain that you guys would have let me know if there was anything goofy going on on the camera there. There certainly wasn't. The Sandy Nanners are a well-mannered team here. As this one from Ella is going to fly into the net and fall for a here for the beer point early on in game three. All that the Sandy Nanners are playing for in this one is to secure the bonus point. The difference between three points and four points in a match week is what happens when you win three games versus winning two games. Colin does well to save that one to send it up for Max, and it's going to fall for a Sandy Nanner point here as Jack will get his fourth set of serves in this one. I'm not sure. I've lost count at this point. His first batch of serves for game three. That's all you need to know here. Is it is as we are in an early one-to-one -one lock here. Switches it up for that high moon ball underhand serve here, pulling out his bag of tricks here in this one. This is going to get sent up and into the net here. Two-to-one. Let's see if they can actually get off to a hot start like they have shown to do in the... They do... Okay, the Santa Nanas are so weird about their starts. In game one, they always stink because that's another high moon ball there from Jack. And that return is no chance of being played by any teammates. Like I was saying, they get off to hot starts in games two and three every so often, but their game one starts are always really bad. Still not sure why that is or how to fix that one just yet, but promise we are working on finding a solution here. As Jack switches back to the overhand serve here. That's why he's the number one server on that squad right now. He's got so many different serves in his arsenal, so many different things he can pull out of his bag of tricks here as he creates a 4-1 to one lead for the Sandy Nanners off of three different missed returns here. Is he going for a jump serve on this one? Why is he so far back? He is. That thing got hit with pace, and that one's going to be a great return. 
That was a well-hit return off of a well-hit serve there. This ball is still in play, and that one's going to fall out of bounds here on the kill attempt from the from Je Jesse in the pink there. Let's get a replay. Wow, that thing is hit with pace. The only, only compliments I can say was that that return might have just been even better than the serve there, but the point still falls for the Nanners. 5-1 in this one. He's going to go back to that jump serve, and this time it is going to hit the net and fall for here for the beer point. 5-2. Three point is the difference already in this one. A good early lead for the Sandy Nanners here. As here for the beer puts their number one server up to the plate here. Colin does well to tip that one up. And Jada is going to have to send it into the net there. Unable to get there off of Gavin's return. They're talking about it on the court there. Two points is the difference now. This serve is going to fly over to Ella. Ella hits it up to Colin. Colin does well to get there. And the point will land for the Nanners. Six foot, six foot three. What? 6-3 is the score here. I don't know why I'm saying 6 foot 3. I just mentioned their height a little bit ago, I know, but I guess that's still on my mind as Max gets his first batch of serves here in the game. 3 for this one for the Sandy Anners. Sticking with the underhand approach here. This one's going to get sent over. Check to Jada. Jada to Colin. Can Colin get a kill on that one? Not so there. Ella's going to send this thing straight over, and that one's going to get tipped and out of bounds there to create a 4-point lead for the Sandy Anners early on in the beginning phase of this game here. Let's see how Max can continue his run of serves so far. He's been very accurate with them so far. Goes to overhand this time, and it's going to be well hit from him, and Colin is going to kill that one then and there as the return floats right up into his jumping zone. He was able to hit that thing down with comparative ease. Some of the stuff we've seen him do earlier on in these games here. Max sticking with an overhand serve here. Set back, a little one-two play there. Callum's not able to get there. Gets sent straight back over then by Jada. The kill on this one is going to fly and go out of bounds here. It's a six-point lead early on for the Nanners as Jack watches that thing fly out of bounds here. Scoring nine points despite using only two servers is a great way to start the game here for the Sandy Nanners. You can only hope that they can do that more often. As Max six with the overhand approach, that one may or may not have been flying out. I guess we'll never know after that one's returned. Ella dives to get that one, sends it up over to the net. Jack covers for her position, and then Ella is already on her feet to send that thing back over after his return. Max has to think about that one for a second, ends up sending it over to Gavin, who gets the kill there, putting it down on her head, as the kids are saying these days. 10-3 is the score early on in this one, and it's already looking like the Sandy Nanners are a lock for game three here. But game's still early. We've just now entered in the middle phase of this game here. It is still very early on here. So that one's going to fall after... I don't think anybody really moved on that one for the San Diego Colin had a jump for the block, but was not able to recover in time to get to it. 10-4, 6 points. Is this one's going to get sent over into the middle to Jack, to Jada, to Colin. Colin kills it there. Textbook play from the San Diego there. A nice little 1, 2, 3, set, set, kill action from... The Nanners there. Perfect play. That's exactly what they drew up on the whiteboards before this one got underway. 11 to 4 as Jada gets another batch of serves here. Not her best day serving for sure, but when she can still do that day in, day out consistently, no worries at all from the Sandy Nanners. So it's going to get sent to Colin, who sends it straight back over. A little bit of a scramble there. It's going to get returned there. This one time, this one, it's, it's going to fall into the net. It went to Ella, to Colin, to back to Ella, and Ella was not able to get that third hit to fly up over the net there. 11-5 is the score in this one. That one's going to fly into the net there, and it is back up to a seven-point lead for your Nanners as Colin gets a chance to see what he can do on the serves here. I believe he is still 100% on his serves, and that will continue here on this one for the season. Not just today, for this season, he is 100% on his serves. And we are in match week six, by the way. So very impressive stuff from him to create another point for the Sandy Nanners. That kind of consistency is much needed, especially down the stretch here as the games will start to get tougher and tougher. That one is going to ride the net, and Ella and Jack are not able to work that one out and return the ball there. 13-6. to six. It is now a seven-point game in this one. It, it certainly feels out just about out of reach already for here for the beer. But we've seen crazier runs happen in this game as Ella is going to get that one up over. And Ella's going to get the kill. Ella gets the kill. Let's go. That's a high point for the Sandy Nanners. They certainly don't show it, but that is, that's a good point to get there. 14-6. to six. They're now seven points away from victory here as Gavin gets his first batch of serves in this one here. 
Uh, getting your first serves when you're not even the last person in your rotation already up by, I believe it was, how many points was that? They were up by eight points right then. That's how you know that your squad is having a good game there. As Gavin gets his second serve in this one, already up ahead by nine. This one's going to fly into the bottom half of the net and drop the lead back down to eight here. 15 to seven. This, I, I, I believe I heard somebody want want down on the court there. Ella's going to send this thing up for Jack. Jack's going to slap that thing hard. It's going to get well recovered there. Sent back over there by Mr. Pickman. Colin is going to send this thing beyond Max's reach there. 15 to 8 now being the score. The stakes have certainly lowered. And you can feel it here watching in this one as the senior Nanas are just having a good time. They have already won the league. They have all but won the extra point in this one. Colin is going to send this thing up for Ella. Ella gets there instead of Jack. Getting it set up over to Colin once again. Colin to Ella. Ella goes far side to Max. This time Max is not able to get a kill attempt on that one. This one's going to get sent over. And Jack Jack to Max. The Twin Towers are here. And well, what a return there. Oh, and it's going to fall. Finally seeing a Twin Tower connection happen this time. 16 to 8. It is double or nothing in this one for the Sandy Nanas. Here's Ella. It finally gets her first batch of serves in game three here. Wow. What a game, what a game. This is the kind of performance you want to be seeing from the Nanners game in and game out there. So that one's gonna get fumbled around, but returned there. Ella steps in from out of frame on her serve to hit the return over there. Colin does well to get up to that one. Max saves it. It's gonna get sent over to the kill attempt is there, but it's gonna fly out of bounds. Gavin pulling his hands back last second on that one to leave it out. You can see him doing a little demonstration there for Colin afterwards. That's a little bit of a goalie instinct thing there that both him and Jack certainly share. And Ella as well on the Sandy Nanner squad. Three different goalkeepers on this squad. That could make a difference. A little one, two, three here play. This one's gonna get blocked by Max, but it, all it does is set it up for Gavin, and Jack comes over to intercept Max and land the kill there as the two collide into each other to create a 10 point game, 18 to eight. It's three points away from victory for your Nanners here. They have gotten better with every single game that they have played this week as Ella has put on a little bit of a show here in the back half of this one with her serves. Why did I say anything? Commentators curse there. I do apologize. 18 to nine now is the score in this one. Once again, back to a double or nothing situation here. As Jesse gets a chance to serve here, Gavin is more than equal to that one. Colin's gonna send this thing up for Jada. Jada sends that thing high and shallow over. Colin is there once again. Jada this time goes, oh, Colin saw the play there, but it's gonna get sent over on the set from Jada and the point will land for the Nanners there. Colin wanted that back row kill. We all saw it from our point of view, but Jada was not able to find him there. Sandy Nanners are two points away from this one as Jack does not do a jump serve this time. Just sending a nice overhand floater there. A little one-two between them on that right-hand side and this one's gonna get sent to Gavin. Gavin is well to get there and Ella is gonna tip that thing up and over and no effort is made to get to the ball from here for the beer. It is now one point. One points, yes. One points is now plural, everybody. The Sandy Nanners are one point away. The jump server's back. It's going to hit the net and fall. It's kicked, but it's going to fly out of bounds there. What an emphatic way to win the game there off of the jump serve from Jack. 21 to 9 being the final score of game three. An absolute thrashing by the hands of the Sandy Nanners. It's a replay here. Those things are hit with pace. If he can refine those throughout the back half of the season here as we are about to enter it, those could be lethal come tournament time at the end of the season. But regardless, a great win for your Sandy Nanners in this one. 21 to nine. That's exactly how you want to end the game. Every single game got better for your Sandy Nanners in this one. And I believe it is now time to take a look at your stats from today's games. Max leading the way with eight kills. Colin close behind with seven and Jack with four there. A little bit of a drop off between the second and three spots. Assist, Jada, Colin, and Gavin, five, three, and two. Jada leading the way on the season, leading the way in this game. Blocks, Max was killing it up at the net with four blocks. Jack with two and Colin with one. In terms of serve percentage, Max and Colin were both 100% today. Ella very close behind with 92. In terms of receiving, Jack and Gavin were the main men leading the way with Jada not too far behind at 88, 83, and 80 percentage apiece. Let's have a look now at the season stats.
for the Sandy Nanners here and kills. Gavin is still leading the way by some margin with 37 over Max and Jack with 29 and 20. Assists, Jada and Jack still leading the way. The JJs with 18 and 11 and Aubrey, despite her limited performances and appearances, are at 9. Uh, blocks, Max with 14, Jack with 11, and Gavin with 7. However, Colin is starting to creep up on that one. Diggs, it's still 5, 3, and 3 with Jack, Max, and Colin with two L's there in that one. Serve percentage, Colin with one L is still at 100%. Colin with two L's is at 95, and Gavin is very closely behind at 94. In terms of receiving, Max and Allison, who we have not seen much of in Jack, make out the top three there on that one. And that will be it for this Sandy Nanner JOSB presentation. Thank you to everybody at home watching this. Thank you to the players down on the court for providing us with the quality entertainment. And thank you to those in the stats room for this one. That's going to be about it. See you around.